So were you lifting? Were you doing cardio? What I'm I'm trying I'm wanna know. Like I'm trying to I got I'm I work with Mario Lopez. I gotta beat that body. I was I was I was just literally I was just training. I was learning the skills of boxing. The skills of boxing are, are not only for the body but they're for the mind. What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmartaids.com. Today we're going to be talking about Jake Gyllenhaal and his body transformation for Southpaw and whether I think it was natural or not and if it wasn't exactly what I think he did to prepare for that role. Does everyone see this crazy, shredded, muscular physique of Gyllenhaal and assumes, okay, this guy must have sauced his mind out for this movie. I would go back to the start of his career and look at his progression to see just what he's been working with for the last decade and a half. He's been an actor for a long time now, and he has shown his physique on multiple occasions. If you go back to him at 20 years old in Donnie Darko, you can see kind of what he was starting with, I guess, uh, before he really was, uh, I guess this might have been his breakout role. And then in Lovely and Amazing, not much change in his physique whatsoever. He's still 20 years old here. In Highway 2002 at 21, he's still a skinny kid, basically. And it wasn't until Proof at 24, you can see kind of a bit of a bicep vein popping out there. He's starting to gain a bit of adult weight, I guess. And then in 2005, Jarhead, this was the first role as far as I know that he had to actually physically prepare for in some capacity and in here this gives us the first kind of look at what his foundation really looks like with training and you can see he does you know he's probably like 13 14 percent body fat he's not overly muscled but he's not he's not a rail by any means like he has something that he's working with here I'm going to his next notable role at 27 years old in accidental love you can see he has Actual visible abs in this role here, he has a bit of a cap delt, he has a bit more chest development. He's not working with nothing. Everyone thinks that, you know, this self-paw role, he just, you know, transformed from Nightcrawler and gained like 20 pounds of pure tissue when they don't really realize the depletion process that went into that Nightcrawler role and what he's been working with in his 20s. After Accidental Love in 2008, in Prince of Persia at 29 years old in 2010, um... He prepared for this role and trained a decent amount too, as far as I know. And you can see actual, like almost like a 3D delt cap here, the bicep vein. He has a good physique here, and it's honestly not that far off from what he was in Southpaw, the one that everyone's referring to. And then moving forward to Love and Other Drugs. This is actually a really good movie if you haven't seen it. Um, 29 years old, full six pack in. He's not jacked. But to be honest, how much smaller is he than he was in Southpaw? Maybe five to 10 pounds at most. And that's kind of what we're going to be getting into next is his transformation from Nightcrawler in 2014 at 33 years old to only shortly thereafter in five months preparing for Southpaw at 34 years old. So in Nightcrawler, he basically became almost you know reminiscent of christian bale the machinist not that gaunt but gaunt enough where he has he's trying to portray a like literally calorie deprived human who's just like working around the clock and is um you know all he cares about is getting the scoop and he this is actually a sick movie by the way if you haven't seen it but um yeah he basically depletes the hell out of his body and just malnourishes himself until he gets uh, as gaunt looking as possible to represent the character and then shortly thereafter he bulks up and he gets the physique we've seen in Southpaw that he's uh you know everyone wants to know what did he take how do you look like this um you know what's it take to prepare for this role in such a short time frame too is it possible naturally to begin with the first thing to note as far as the transformation is the difference in lighting circumstances. So obviously the images everyone looks at, he has a uh, crazy down lighting. He's just been in a fight. Everything's pumped up and popping. Obviously he prepares for these shots. It's a routine for these actors to get a pump and then go into the shot and get the most optimal lighting circumstances. Like the guy's been fighting, the guy has been sparring, he's been doing whatever, all the veins are brought to the surface. He's also lean as hell and he's flexing his fucking head off. Like this is not representative of what you look like just walking around in broad you know like unflattering daylight he's in heavy downlighting here but does that mean it's you know achievable naturally based on the statistics we can see i'm going to get into some of these interviews where he talks about how he prepped for the roles here and we can get some more insight so in prince of persia in 2010 jake um 
I would he wasn't that far off of Southpaw, I would say. Like he was he obviously peaked for Southpaw. It was probably the greatest body composition of his entire career. But the prep for Prince of Persia, how much different was it? He kind of goes into what he did and involved a lot of parkour and he kind of elaborates on how his ideal training style is more so around outdoors and like you know athletic related endeavors rather than just strict weight training but he did weight train for this role jake did such um, an amazing job training himself for this film he actually said at the very first meeting i want to be in really really great shape for this so he immediately went to work worked out every single day even though while we were filming it you know he'd finish every night and go to the gym and work out so we can see what he sort of is capable of achieving with pretty committed you know diet and training regimen for prince of persia and that was in his late 20s, so, you know, your peak of being able to pack on muscle tissue, essentially, as a natural. Um, and moving forward to Nightcrawler, we get a better insight as to what kind of foundation he was giving himself to work off of to rebound for Southpaw, and if he was able to achieve the body composition for Prince of Persia without coming off of a crazy rebound where he's deprived himself. How realistic was it for him to achieve the Southpaw physique naturally? I kind of just want to show exactly how deprived he was to really drive home how significant of a change this actually was at the end of the day. You lost a lot of weight for that film, right? Yeah, I lost like 25 or 30 pounds, yeah. And and why? You just thought he should look... Why not, you know? <laughs> yeah. So he lost 25 to 30 pounds for this role. Now, how much of that was fat and how much was muscle and how much was just glycogen and intramuscular water weight and stuff like that a lot of it was just you know temporary weight but a significant amount of it was actual muscle tissue too as you can see he's very very gaunt in the nightcrawler movie and that was the goal of it and he achieved it very well it wasn't as extreme as christian bale but it's pretty damn extreme it's one of the more drastic transformations that we've looked at and he kind of goes into uh, the extremes he took his body to in that preparation. What did you do to prepare for this role? I wanted him to look like a coyote. And in order to do that, I had to look hungry and be hungry. He means that literally. Gyllenhaal lost nearly 30 pounds for the role by eating a diet of kale salads and going on long runs. I would do this loop, this 10 mile loop, and I would picture myself as sort of a coyote. <laughs> um, like I was running with my brethren or something after a while. <laughs> so kale salads, water, long runs, this is the traditional kind of like catabolic <laughs> diet model for guys trying to uh, prepare for these roles. They go into sub 1000 calorie diets, they stop training, they do long endurance work, and. They basically just turn themselves into, you know, what appears to be like marathon runner like physiques, which it works by all means, it works. But the thing that often goes overlooked is muscle memory. Like I've detailed this in the Christian Bale video, I've detailed this many times before, how accrued myonuclei can then, you can sort of leverage that down the line in your life to regain whatever you've lost. I'm sure you've experience this yourself if you ever taken a long time off from the gym it's not that hard to get back into it and make back you know five years of gains in what seems to be a few months and it's not that you have some like super anabolic process going on or you're taking gear rather it's that you've already accrued that bank of myonuclei in your younger years of working out and are just drawing off of them now and re you know initiating hypertrophy in that already accrued muscle tissue essentially so the drastic change going from the 30 pound weight deprivation in Nightcrawler and then going up to baseline supposedly and gaining 15 pounds of lean tissue for Southpaw. Jake Gyllenhaal reportedly gained 15 pounds of muscle as part of his remarkable transformation to play light heavyweight boxing champion Billy Hope in Southpaw. Again, we already know that actors are completely delusional when it comes to weight loss and weight gain metrics. So saying 15 pounds of lean tissue, who knows if he actually believes it was 15 pounds of muscle or not but at the end of the day is the is a transformation natural or not that's all we really care about can you talk a little bit about how you um went from nightcrawler to this one because that must have been a long journey for you when people ask me how i got into shape i just go i was just scared that i was gonna look like an idiot i mean i don't think fear tactics are the best but that was <laughs> definitely a big part of it and so daily you know i i end up training twice a day because I had five months and I thought, how do I expand five months into longer? You train twice a day, then it's 10 months, you know? 
and then that's 10 months of learning in five months. I knew I needed to double my time, kind of, so I made kind of eight months and four months and really learned all the skills of boxing. Gyllenhaal goes on to explain how he trained twice a day for five months straight after Nightcrawler to gain back the weight and put on 15 pounds of muscle after that previous role. And none of this was with weight training, keep in mind, where he had done it prior for Prince of Persia. He claims it was just, he goes on and on. It almost seems like he gets annoyed in the interviews when people ask about weight training. He just says, I train like a boxer. So were you lifting? Were you doing cardio? What, I'm, I'm trying, I want to know. Like, I'm trying to, I got, I'm, I work with Mario Lopez. I got to beat that body. I was, I was, I was just literally, I was just training. I was learning the skills of boxing. The skills of boxing are, are not only for the body, but they're for the mind. So without training with weights, no progressive overload, just training twice a day with cardio, essentially body weight movements. It looks like in some of these training clips, he's doing like push-ups, decline push-ups. He's doing, you know, like rowing machines. He's doing a lot of boxing. None of it is really, you know, like strictly monitored progressive overload geared entirely towards gaining muscle. So how realistic is it that he gained a better physique in this role than he did in all his previous roles, completely naturally with no progressive overload whatsoever? First, I look at his physique and his training. And honestly, it's not that much different than it was in the Prince of Persia or in um, some of his previous roles in the past. It's pretty damn similar. But in some of the footage in the movie, Perhaps he might have taken a diuretic for some of these scenes. Maybe he severely depleted himself. And, you know, with the downlighting and everything, it just looks significantly more impressive. But I don't think you can really dispute that he definitely is more muscular than he was in his previous roles, despite the fact that he did supposedly less weight training, actually zero compared to his previous roles. And he had a more condensed time frame, regardless of him saying, oh, you know, five months training twice a day. It's like doing 10 months. Like, no, you still need to recover. You can't just do a year, a year's worth of training in six months or something and say it was a year's worth because you did it twice a day. Like, if anything, that might impede your muscle recovery. So he's definitely more muscular than he ever has been. And with less of a training stimulus to actually engage hypertrophy and coming off of a severely deprived baseline... <laughs> And having the most, you know, the hardest circumstances pitted against him for achieving this physique. So at the end of the day, I think he probably used something small like an Anavar to prepare for this role. I don't think it was something heavy duty. I think if he did use something and it's really on the fence, to be honest, if he did or not, because some of these images, if you just look at them, he doesn't look like anything, you know, he doesn't look juiced out of his mind until he takes off his shirt and does that like crazy flexing shot or some of the gym shots where he's like mid fight. When he's just standing there in the ring with his team and whatnot, he just looks like a fit guy with, you know, abs. When he's sitting down in the corner, he just looks like a fit guy. He doesn't look like, you know, he sauced his mind out or even took as something as small as Anavar for this role. But his transformation is reminiscent of that of Ryan Reynolds for that uh, Blade Trinity movie, in my opinion. They achieved a similar drastic body transformation in a short period of time. I don't think that uh, this is very borderline if it could have been achievable naturally. Again, some of these circumstances are very flattering in the movie shots compared to the actual real life shots and make me sort of question my decision on this. And at the end of the day, a lot of this is really, you know, up for interpretation. Some people are going to say, no, this is so achievable naturally. How could you possibly say he's on gear? And I would sort of agree with that in some circumstances. You look at some of these images of him in the ring that are less flattering. They're not meant to really highlight what's going on. Like lighting can literally make the difference between you looking jacked and you looking like you don't even lift in some circumstances. So it's really on the fence for me. But if he did do something, I'd say it was something as light as an Anavar just to support extra recovery, get a bit of a cosmetic drying out look, gain a bit of muscle while supporting that ridiculous workload of doing twice a day body weight and boxing routine and whatnot so if he did it was light it wasn't too aggressive in my opinion and he still achieved an amazing physique and obviously you can't discredit the hard work that goes into achieving a physique like this he obviously worked his ass off and it shows in the uh, final product so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below do you think he used anything for this role if so what do you think it was um, based on his baseline, based on his progression throughout his 20s, based on the severe malnourishment he basically underwent for Nightcrawler and then rebounding to his best physique ever? Do you still think that despite this physique objectively maybe not being impressive to the <laughs> niche of the fitness community, which is a lot of my viewers, but to the average person, this looks extremely impressive. So keep that in mind. Objectively, this is an insane physique. 
do you think based on all those circumstances, this is naturally achievable or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, the comments help the algorithm. So they're very much appreciated when you guys drop them down there as well as liking the video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell or else you won't get notified when I post. If you want to see some more elaborate deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology and whatnot, you can check out my site, moreplaythemoredates.com and subscribe to the newsletter. I highly recommend you do if you want to get sent articles when I publish them. They're far more elaborate than my videos and have uh, deep dives into clinical research, have concise subsections with all the clinical studies I referenced cited for you to delve into further yourself for your own personal education and research and whatnot. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, check out any Anything I'm associated with in the video description below as well. My TRT clinic that I'm associated with, my Gorilla Mind nootropics and pre-workout formulas that I literally sit on a Word document and create from scratch myself, um, and anything else that supports the channel. It's all much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.